Hello everyone, my name is Michael McKinn and welcome to this tutorial on low poly modeling in Blender. Here I have this scene of this Asian style temple, uh, but the only thing that we're going to be concentrating on in this tutorial is the temple itself. And first I'll be going through the techniques that I used to model this, and then I'll be doing some texture painting and also some work in cycles. I'm starting with a plane. I'm going to tab into edit mode and then type Alt P to add a vertex in the center. And then now from top orthographic view, I'm going to inset with I. And I'll repeat this a few times and I'm going to try to do each one about two Blender units in. And then now from front orthographic view, I'm going to drag this roof up by using proportional editing. And if you don't use proportional editing very often, it's, it's just something that you need to practice with and sort of get a feel for. Uh, but I'm just trying to get sort of the, uh, a nice curve on this roof by scrolling in and out with the mouse wheel. Now I'll select this outer edge and just scale it out a little. And delete those faces at the top. For the material, I'm just going to give it sort of a dull green. Now in edit mode from the top view, I want to add a loop cut down the middle of the front of the roof and then hit V, which is the rip tool, and that disconnects it. Now I'm going to hold control while I move these edge loops because that snaps it to the grid and I can move them um, in even spaces away from one another. And with those two edge loops selected, I'm going to hit W and then Bridge Edge Loops, and then extrude those faces out. Okay, but I want these to be a little more rounded at the top, so I'm going to add a loop cut up the middle with Control R, and then deselect the edges at the top and the bottom. Under Display, I'm just getting rid of the grid floor and, and those relationship lines. And now again, holding control, I'm going to move these outward and up, about two blender units. All right, now I'm going to select this whole section that, that I extruded, and I'm going to type P, and then separate by selection. And now that it is its own object, uh, because I'll be editing it with a modifier and I don't want that to affect the rest of the roof. I'm going to hide that piece for a moment and then select these two edge loops and hit W, Bridge Edge Loops and select them again and hit X and Dissolve Edges. Now I can unhide that with Alt-H and in between each one of these sections in edit mode I'm going to add three edge loops by just hitting Control R and then scrolling up on the mouse wheel three times. And now I want to select every other loop. And if I were to just hit G, it grabs them, but if I hit G a second time, then it's the loop slide tool. So I want to slide them down to almost where they meet the loop below them. And now if I were just to scale them, they would either go uh, sort of in towards each other or away from each other. So I want to set it to individual origins. And now they scale independently. And because I'm going to be using these materials as sort of the base color for texture painting later, um, I'm going to assign a new material to the underside of these little edges along this beam uh, because in you know real world lighting they would probably not have direct light on them so uh, they would be a little darker or appear to have a shadow. So I'll select a similar color green and just make it a little darker. Alright so now I want these beams to be spread out across the surface of the roof and you can see from top orthographic view that the center of this beam 
runs down straight through the Y relationship line. So I want these beams to be every two Blender units apart, and so I'm going to do that with the Array modifier. And by adjusting the relative offset on X, I can sort of tweak the values to get them exactly two Blender units apart. If it's short or if it's over just a little, um, it's still a big deal because as you add more to the count, that distance multiplies and it actually becomes very obvious in the end. All right, so I'm going to take the count up to five, and then holding control will snap that object to the grid, and I'm going to drag it back so that the last one is in the position of where the first one originated. And then I can add four more to the count, and that will complete the side. Okay, so now there are these beams that fit the contour of that roof's slope, which is great. Um, but before I apply this array modifier, I want to add some seams and unwrap this. So with Control E, I'm going to add some seams along these edges on the bottom and the top. So now I'll open up my UV image editor, and I'm going to select a face and hit U and unwrap. And if I select these crooked edges, I can hit W and then align Y and do the same for the bottom. Okay, so now with L, I can select that whole object and then hit U and follow active quads. And that unwraps it really neatly. So I'm just gonna move it off to the side and forget about it for now. Uh, but by doing that, it'll save us from having to unwrap a million of these later. So I've applied the modifier, and now I need to shave off these corners. So I'm going to tab into edit mode, and then scroll down and find bisect. And I'm going to use this long edge of the roof as sort of a guideline. I'm just going to drag the line down, and then go to my bisect menu, and select clear outer. And you can see that it just sort of shaved off everything. And I can do the same thing on the other side, except you can see that it doesn't really work the same way. You have to go counterclockwise, the opposite direction, to shave off the other side. Uh, then it's important to make sure that there's no strange, loose parts just kind of hanging out in space like this. So just select it and delete it. Uh, but for the most part, it usually does it pretty cleanly. Okay, so I want these beams to go on all four sides of the roof, and that can be done in just a few seconds. So I'm going to tab into edit mode and select everything, and then change my pivot point to 3D cursor. And now I can type Shift D, and then rotate on Z 90 degrees, and then Shift R twice to repeat that action. And that quickly, I have those beams on all four sides of the roof. Now I'm going to create these, these corner beams that come along the edges. So I'm just going to select them all and hit Shift D to duplicate them. And then drag them up a little. Now in edit mode and with them selected, I'm going to hit P. And then choose separate by selection. Because I'll be adding a modifier to this as well. So in edit mode, I'm going to extrude it up on Z. Now go into top orthographic view and use the solidify modifier. I want to make sure that I check even thickness and then just scroll up through the thickness values until you get the width that you want. And then change the offset so that they're aligned to those corners. Now I'll move them back down and put them into position. I want them to come down a little lower than the roof. And in edit mode, I can adjust the height of those corner beams. OK, 
Okay, so I can just apply that modifier and then select all of the faces at the end uh, because, you know, oftentimes Asian temples have these little curves at the corners of the roof. So I'm going to hit E to extrude and then Alt S to scale along the normals. And my pivot point is in uh, median point. I'm going to move them up and then change it to individual origins and scale them on Z. Now I'm going to go back to individual or um, sorry, pivot point and repeat that process. Extrude and then Alt S to scale along the normals, move them up and then back to individual origins again and scale them on Z. Okay, so we're close to being finished the roof. Uh, there's just a few more things. I'm going to select the beams and the roof itself and hit H to hide it. And I'm just going to tab into edit mode and start deleting some of these faces on the underside of these corner beams uh, because they won't be seen and they just really don't need to be there. And, uh, you know, when in, in regards to texture space, especially when you're doing texture painting, it's really useful to have as much texture space as you can. And so any faces on your mesh that aren't visible, um, they're basically just wasting texture space. So now I'm going to mark some seams along the bottom so that these unwrap uh, nice and even. I never do this at the very end. I always mark my seams as I go because honestly, I just hate doing it. So uh, it's better for me if I just do it little by little. And I can do this the same way as before. Just select the face and then hit U and unwrap. And these unwrap nice and uh, sort of clean so you don't have to align anything. You can just hit U again and select follow active quads and they unwrap pretty evenly. And when we get to the end, of course, you know, there will be time to sort of straighten up all the UVs in the, uh, in the texture space. For right now, I'm just sort of moving them out of the way. And now I can go back to object mode and hit Alt H and that unhides the rest of the roof. And I want to bring the bottom of the roof down a little, so I'm going to select the edges on the outside of the roof and extrude them down on Z. And then hit F to add a face. Now I'm going to hit Shift A and add a cylinder and take the vertice count down to 8 and delete the bottom face. And I'm going to use this to sort of fill in the hole at the top of the roof. So I'm just going to scale it in and bring it up. And now just, uh, you know, you could do this anyway. I'm just going to make some extrusions and scale to do a little detail and then maybe make sort of a, a little uh, sphere on the top. And again, I'm just doing this by extruding and then scaling. And at the top, I want to select the vertices uh, that are across from one another and use J to join them. Okay. And just tweak it a little so it looks a little nicer. And I'm pretty happy with that. Now I want to select all these objects and hit Control J to join them. And now they're all one mesh. And so I can finish uh, adding my seams and, and unwrapping the roof. This is sort of a tricky object to unwrap, but I think if I just do the follow active quads, I think it won't matter really where you add the seam. Yep, 
Yeah, I think that looks okay. Now I'm going to select this face and inset it. And then delete that face. Now by selecting all of these edges, I can hit Control E and mark seams. And then unwrap this as well. I just used a simple unwrap for that. And you can see if I just if I select uh, average island scale and then pack islands, uh, you can see it puts everything in there pretty neatly. But you know I'm gonna have to do this again later when the rest of the model is finished. So uh, I'll wait until then before I really start working with the UVs. Now I can extrude these edges down. And this will start to make the, the walls of the temple. I'm going to select it and give it a new material. And I'll just keep the color as white. Now with my edge select, I can select the edges where it meets the roof. And one along the side. And hit Control E to mark the seam. And then U and unwrap. And you can see that that unwraps really neatly. So now in a front orthographic view, I want to select this edge along the side and hit Shift S, cursor to selected. And then hit Shift A and add a cube. And I'm going to give it sort of a, a maybe like a dull pale reddish color. Then I want to delete the faces on the top and the bottom and select the cube and press S to scale it down until it's about the height of the walls. And then S, Shift, Z to scale along X and Y. And now it's sort of acting as sort of a border for the walls. Now I'm going to mark the seam in the back corner. and select it and hit shift D and move it on the X axis. Now I'm going to do it once more to put one right in the center. And then duplicate it with shift D and then rotate it on Y 90 degrees and move it down. And also scale it on X until it meets the, the edges. And then Shift D one more time on Z and, and move it up to the top. And I want to select the front face of the top and bottom beams and just pull them back a little. And then on the inside I'm going to select those, uh, those beams in the back and just delete them again because they're just taking up texture space and they just don't need to be there. Alright, so I'm going to select all of those beams and then hit U and unwrap. Now hit Shift C to bring the cursor back to the center. And only with the top, bottom, and middle beams selected, I'm going to hit Shift D and then rotate on Z 90 degrees. And then Shift R again twice, because that repeats it, just like we did with the, the roof. And now I can just select these two outer ones. And hit Shift D and rotate on Z 180 degrees. I want to select the face of the middle beam in the front and hit Shift S and choose Cursor to Selected and then Shift A and add a circle and then take the vertices count down to 16 Now I'm just going to move it out to the front and rotate it on Y 90 degrees and scale it in. Now I'm going to use C which is the brush select tool to 
uh, just select all of these edges and then delete them. I'm going to scale it down so that it doesn't go past the, uh, the edge of the roof. And now in front view, I'm going to move it over a little and then extrude it on X. And then select it and assign the same material as those beams. And then I'm going to go into my side view and I'm going to extrude it and then hit Alt S to scale it along its normals and then select it all and recalculate it because those normals look a little funky. Uh, so now with the bottom I want to extrude it down a little on Z and with that face selected I want to hit S Z 0 which flattens that face out and I'll do the same with this face just select it and hit scale Y 0 And then after you position it up to where it meets the roof, uh, you can just add your seams. Again, because there's going to be quite a few of these. Uh, so it's, it's better to just go ahead and unwrap the first one. Do it the same exact way. Unwrap one face evenly and then select the whole mesh and, uh, and use follow active quads and that unwraps nicely. So now I'll duplicate it with Shift D so that there's three of them in the front. And then I can select all three. And if you're still rotating from the 3D cursor, you can hit Shift D and rotate on Z 90 degrees and then shift R twice again to repeat it. And then you should have those uh, curved uh, you know, roof support beams all around, which looks pretty cool. Now I'm just assigning that darker green material to the underside of the roof um, because again, there wouldn't be direct light on it. So that'll help later when, when I'm texture painting. I'm also going to delete some of these faces of the beams that won't be visible. I always like to go on the outside just to, to, to check to make sure that they're not actually visible. You can also assign that dark green material under these corner beams. Alright, I'm pretty sure that I've unwrapped this whole mesh already, uh, each part individually. Um, so I want to select Average Island Scale and then Pack Islands. And I never really like how it's organized uh, for you in the texture space, so I always like to do this myself. When it comes to texturing, you know, some parts of your mesh are going to need a higher pixel count um, and other parts might not need a lot of detail at all. So really it's important to do this by hand and uh, scale down the, the parts of your mesh that, uh, you know, just won't need that detail so that you have more room for the parts that will. And this process actually took a long time to do, so I'm speeding through it on the video, but if you um if you want to learn a little bit about how I am organizing the the UVs uh, under the YouTube video itself, um, there's a setting to slow down the video, so you can just take the take the speed way down. But basically, I'm putting all alike things together, so um, different materials like the red beams are going together. Um, all of those different uh, little um, green beams that are on the roof they're going to go together and I'm even going to separate them and organize them into their size because the ones in the middle are longer and in the ones at the edge get a lot shorter so I'm sort of putting it together like a puzzle and 
and also once I, I, I get the UVs the way that I want them and I set them in, I'm selecting them with B, which is box select, and I'm hitting P to pin them. And that way I, they can't be moved later. I'm also leaving a little space open on my texture because I'm going to be adding some more to the mesh. Now in wireframe, I'm going to box select sort of the, the bottom two thirds of the mesh. And then deselect some of these edges so that it's a little more flat and clean. And also select these edges that were left out when I box selected. And now in front view, I'm going to hit Shift D and then bring it down on Z and then scale it out and adjust the scaling so that the two parts fit together. Okay, that looks good. Um, and all of those UVs that are selected, they're just going to lay right over top of the ones that we already pinned down. So we won't need to unwrap those again. And so I'm just going to repeat that step a third time. Just, you know, duplicate it and bring it down and scale it until it looks like it fits. Now I'll go into front view and select the bottom beam and the front middle beam along with that curved beam and delete them. And I want to add a door to the front so I'm going to select that front face and then invert the selection and hide it with H and then select the edges on the outside and hit W and choose subdivide and that adds an edge through it you could also use control R and now I can choose the bottom edge and subdivide that and change the number of cuts to 2 and do the same thing with that middle edge and then I can connect them with J now selecting those outer vertices, I can hit G twice to use vertex slide. And then with everything selected, I can hit W and then remove doubles, and that'll get rid of those two extra vertices. Then with the door selected, I can extrude it back. And then hit Alt-H to unhide everything. Now I'm going to add my seams to the door. and delete this face at the bottom. I'll also need to unwrap the front again because I've inset it and changed the UVs. It's going to get all those edges on the outside and hit control E and mark a seam there. So now I can select uh, those individual UVs and hit Alt P to unpin them and that way I can unwrap them. And so this is why I left that a uh, little bit of space at the bottom corner of the texture because I knew that there would be a few more pieces to the mesh to have to fit in. So now I can just scale these in and, uh, and and make some room for them. Now I'm going to duplicate this beam and bring it down on Z 
because I want to make sort of a frame around the door. So for the time being, I'll just move this part of the UVs out to the side. And I'll shift D and rotate it on Y 90 degrees. And now I'll start framing the door. And these beams are missing an edge, so I'm going to select uh, an edge on both of them and then extrude them back on Y. and then get rid of this seam. Okay, I think that's looking pretty good. It's a little uneven, uh, so I'll go into wireframe, just straighten them up a little. So now I can unwrap these beams as well, um, but in the UV image editor, I'm going to unpin them with Alt-P, and uh, then I can unwrap them uh, individually or independently from the others. Only use Alt-P in the UV image editor, not the 3D space, because that, that's the poke tool, and it'll, add, uh, it'll turn all of your faces into triangles. I've got this weird UV here, so I just need to find which face that is on the mesh. And it should be a really easy fix. Okay, there it is. Um, so I'm just going to grab this corner and move it back. I don't really know how that happened. It could have been a bug in Blender or it could have been just something that I did. Uh, maybe I wasn't paying attention. Okay, now you can see that all those UVs are over top of one another, so that when I paint, I'll be painting on multiple surf surfaces at once, which uh, saves texture space and time. I'm going to add a new material to the door and make it just brown. And now that I'm looking at it, it looks like I can just delete this whole... Uh, sort of loop of faces there because they're, they're, they won't be seen from the outside. And yeah, that removed them from the UVs too. So I, I can actually scale these beams up that are around the door uh, and give them more texture space because I'll probably put a little bit of detail on them. Okay, so I want to add some lanterns in the front. So I'm going to select this face on this beam and use Shift S and cursor to select it, and then Shift A and add UV sphere. Then I'll take the segments down to six, and the rings as well, select six. And then I can scale this on Z to make it a little longer, and then scale it down in size. And then just position it so that it looks like it's, it's sort of hanging from that curved beam. And now I'll unwrap a face and straighten up the edges by selecting one side and hitting W and then align X and doing the same for the other side. And then unwrapping again and using follow active quads. And now I'll duplicate it so that there's one on the other side. And those UVs are over top of one another, so um, so that's good because, you know, again, we'll be painting on one over, over the UVs, and it'll apply it to both of those. Now I can select these lanterns and give them a new material. I'm going to make them a dark red. All right. That's looking okay.
Now I can create a new texture and make it fairly large. And then make sure that the bake mode is set to texture and then click bake. And this will be a really good starting point for when we texture paint. It's, it's sort of our base colors that we'll be using. So I'm just going to save this to my desktop and then we'll be ready to start texture painting. So in order to do that, I need to um, create a new material and assign the whole mesh to it. And then I can apply that texture that I just baked. And then give my scene some light so that I can and see it in, in texture mode. Okay, now I'm going to go into texture paint. And I'm actually realizing that I forgot something. Uh, these triangle faces here on the lamps uh, would not have unwrapped because I, I did follow active quads, which doesn't, um, doesn't unwrap triangles. So I'm just marking some seams and I'm selecting them. And, uh, and you can see here in the UV image editor, this little pixel here, and that represents the, all of those faces. So I need to unpin them and then unwrap them again. And I can just fit them into whatever texture space I have available. And now those faces don't have any color applied to them, so I can fix that really easily by selecting my Fill tool. And down here in the toolbar, I want to select Face Selection Masking for Painting. And now I can select which part of the mesh I want to paint on. So I'm just going to select those triangle faces. And in the image editor, I want to make sure that I'm in paint mode and use the S key as the color select. And then I can just fill those faces in with that red color. Okay, so now I can start on the roof um, doing a little bit of detail. Uh, I want to select my paintbrush, choose a dark green color, and take the radius down. And then I'm going to change the stroke from space to line. And then I'm going to use these edges on the UVs as a guideline and just drag these lines across to them. And to do the remainder of the lines, I'm going to paint those right on the model. Uh, and I'm going to use that face selection for masking option and just select the faces that I want to paint on and then fill in these gaps in between the the lines that I just created on the UVs and I'm just going to line the brush up with that detail that's on those individual beams so it looks like those tiles go straight across I'm not going to be doing a lot of traditional uh, texture painting on this model, but instead use uh, stencil painting, which is a lot of fun and a really easy way to add some detail really quickly to a model. Uh, but first I want to do the roof, and I might actually uh, add some detail to the door. But while we're on the roof, I want to add some shadows by increasing the radius and lowering, lowering the opacity. And then I can just, you know, create these little cast shadows underneath the tiles. And that makes it, you know, it gives it the illusion that they're maybe overlapping a little. And for the stencil painting, we need to make some stencils. So I'm going to go to CG Textures. And in the search browser, I'm going to search Temple. And there's lots of really cool textures that you can search through and find ones that you like. I'm looking for ones that you can remove the background really easily, like this. The background looks like one solid image, and and you could pretty easily remove it in a photo editing software like GIMP or Photoshop. 
and I'm looking for at least like four or five different different images to use so that there can be a, a variety of, of different types on the model and I'm downloading the largest uh, file size available because when you're working in Photoshop or GIMP and you're trying to do something like remove the background the larger the the pixel size of the image the easier it is to do okay so now that I'm in GIMP I'm going to use the rectangle select and select the bottom and use the eraser just to to erase all that color out and then I can use the fuzzy select tool and shift select all of these smaller areas within the image and then go back to my eraser and just remove all of that color Now with all that still selected, I want to go to color and then color to alpha and choose white. And that will remove all of that color. And now you have a transparent background. And so now I can just deselect everything. And clean up any areas that, that didn't get erased. And now I want this to look hand painted. I don't want it to look too real, so I'm going to desaturate it. And then adjust the brightness and contrast by taking them both all the way up. And that should make the image completely white. And now I can use the bucket fill tool to just fill in whatever color I want. I'm going to choose like a dark, like bronze or gold color and now I'll duplicate this layer and the layer over top is going to get a little bit of a lighter color and now I can use the eraser to just erase around that edge so that the the darker layer underneath shows through and this kind of looks like it's it's giving it a little bit of depth And I'm not being especially neat with this because, you know, it is, it's like, it's going to look like a hand painted sort of cartoon look. So uh, now I'm going to take a little bit of a lighter color and give some highlights to where maybe some, some light would be catching it. If this is supposed to, to sort of look like a, uh, a kind of gold or metal material, um, you know, it would probably have some really sharp reflections on it. So. And with images like this, I want this dragon to be completely black, so I'm just going to use the fill tool to change all that color. And because it's completely black, I won't have to, to, to make it look hand painted. I can just remove the background really easily and, and be done with it. So I'll desaturate it and then do some brightness and contrast, move them both up. and then color to alpha, remove the white, and then I can just erase that black border around. And so basically you wanna do the same kind of work with all the textures that you've downloaded from CG Textures, and when you're done, just go back into Blender. And I'm going to go to my default view. And I want to create a new material, but this, this material won't be assigned to any mesh. I'm just creating it so that I can then import all of those textures into one window. So all those textures that I just made in, in GIMP, I'm just going to pull into Blender. And then all of these images will be available as brushes in my texture paint options. So 
So before you get started, make sure that the brightness of your brush is turned all the way up. And I want to select the lantern so that I can just paint on them alone. And then under texture, I'll select the, the texture of that dragon. You can't see it because it's a, it's a black image on top of alpha, which is represented by black. And I want to switch it from tiled to stencil. And now you can move the stencil by right clicking, just dragging the image to where you want it. And then hold shift and right click and drag the mouse forward or back to scale the size. You can use control and right click and, and mouse uh, drag to rotate it, but in this image I, I won't need to rotate it. And then you just paint where, where the stencil is and it will then appear on the mesh, which is really cool. And because those UVs are overlaid, then, you know, it shows up on both. Texture painting actually does have symmetry now, which is really great, and we'll be using that. So I'll be just selecting all of these beams. And now I'll select this image. And I'm going to rotate it. Uh, here you can do some scaling and, and some just different adjustments to the image. Uh, but I'm just, I like doing it manually with the mouse. You can also lock the, uh, the uh, put a constraint to the axis by, by holding Y or X while you're scaling it. So once you get it in, into position, I'm going to enable uh, X under the symmetry and now as I paint on one side it will show up on the other side which is really cool I'm glad that blender added that in 2.75 and I'll just keep doing this all the way around I've enabled uh, the symmetry on X and on Y and this will help really quickly just put this uh, little stencil all the way around the, the base of the temple Now I can set the rotation back to zero and paint more of the stencil on the top. I don't really have a plan for where I'm putting these stencils. Um, I'm just kind of just going along and just making decisions as I go. Uh, but, you know, I think just for the demonstration purpose, I think it'll look okay. Probably be better if I had a, pl had a plan, though. Um, your brush might look a little stretched when you first add it, so uh, right underneath of the stencil, uh, if you click that image aspect button, it will it will sort of reset the image to its original size and scaling, so uh, it, it won't look like it's stretched or deformed. And ordinarily, I would really like to spend some time on painting some detail. Uh, some like shadows and maybe some like fine little cracks and chips and things onto the model but instead I'm just going to bake out some shadows in cycles because honestly I, I just think that this tutorial is going to be too long as it is I had debated on whether or not it would be a one part or a two part thing I, I don't really know I'd like to have it all in one video if possible um, but really I want to emphasize just how much detail you can get with just stencil painting because it's it's such a cool feature and uh, and not a lot of people use it um, I don't see a lot of videos or tutorials about it on on YouTube so uh, so hopefully you guys will get something out of this but um, yeah I think it's a really cool way to really quickly add some detail but uh, again it, it would look better if you really spent some time on the model doing some of that fine detail and and actual like uh, traditional style texture painting. But with that said, I do I do believe that this is going to look pretty cool after we bake some shadows out in cycles. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. 
Uh, so, like I said earlier, I probably will have to paint this door because it's just too flat and and just brown and boring. So, um, I'll I'll probably do like a simple like wood plank door, and maybe uh, do a little more stencil work over top of it. So first, I'm going to put this dark line down the middle. That's a little uneven, so I'll try that again. Okay, and now I'll lighten up that opacity a little and make some sort of even planks. Okay, so so far I've been doing all of my texture painting with a mouse, um, but I am going to switch over to the tablet. I'm going to lower the radius and opacity down pretty low, and I'm just going to start sketching over all of these lines um, really faintly so that it creates a little bit of a shadow, and then I'll be using the, the blend brush to kind of soften everything up. Again, I learned to texture paint with a mouse, and I, I did it that way for years. Uh, but having been introduced to a tablet has really made texture painting a lot more fun. So if it's something that you're really serious about doing, just, you know, just get one. You know, a, a really cheap, a cheap tablet might only run you like, uh, you know, 40 or 50 bucks. I, I don't even know. Actually, I don't even know how much mine was. Mine was a gift, so <laughs> I was fortunate that someone was kind enough to buy it for me. Um, uh, otherwise, I don't know. I might never have tried the tablet, but I do. I love using it. It's great. Uh, so now I'm just going to brush some lighter color up. With texture painting, um, it depends on the material, but with wood, I always like to just put all of the color down first and then work on blending because you can really just get all of the detail from blending alone and, and not ever switching back to your paintbrush at all. So I'll just drag these colors down. The trick is really getting the uh, the strength right. I think you don't want it to be too strong, and and you know if if it's too weak, you you know obviously you won't really notice much of a difference. But uh, when you get it just right, it's just all starts to come together really easily. I'm dragging that color down, and I'm also going along the the cracks in the wood planks because I, I want to soften up those edges a little. And now I'll take my strength up and the radius down. I'm going to have the strength all the way up because I just want to start dragging some of that dark color into the lighter colors. And that will look like, you know, fine cracks in and wood grain. Okay, I'm not going to spend too much time on this. I just wanted to have some detail, again, so that it wasn't so flat. Now I can choose this stencil, which I think will look really good on the corners of the door. And again, I have my x-axis uh, symmetry locked. So 
So now I can flip it on 180 degrees and move it up to the top left corner. And yeah, that's cool. Okay, I think that that is done. And uh, so before we go into cycles, I want to save this image texture since now it's been edited. And I can delete that material that had all of those alpha images in them because I won't need that anymore. And now I'm in cycles and I've moved over to compositing. And I'm just going to set up my windows a little differently. I like to have uh, two 3D windows at the top and then my UV image editor and the node editor at the bottom. Now before I get started with materials, I'm just setting up my lighting the way that I want it. Um, I'm just, I just want to create some interesting shadows and colors on the model before I add the textures. So after I have it the way that I think looks okay, I'm going to add a new material to the model. And with the diffuse shader selected, I'm going to hit Control T, which adds a, a texture node and a mapping and UV coordinates node. And I can just open up that, that texture. Now I'm going to type Shift A and then add a glossy shader and combine them by holding Alt and right mouse click and then dragging them together. And I'm going to plug the color of the texture into the color of the glossiness. And that gives it a little bit of a cartoon look. I'm also going to adjust the roughness because I don't want the, the model to look too shiny. Okay, so even though I painted some of these stencils to look a little three-dimensional, um, you can go one step further and just plug the color of the image texture into the displacement of the material output. And you can see that that sort of makes it stand up like, like a normal map or a bump map. So if I add a math node in and I switch it to multiply, you can actually increase the effect, uh, but I don't want it to be too strong. I just want it to to be noticeable enough and that even puts some detail into the door. It will have also put a little bit of detail into the the tiles on the roof so um, although you won't it won't be super noticeable you know it, it'll still react a little bit to the light. Okay so I'm going to now select the lanterns and I'm going to add a new material and I'm going to assign it to them. And now the same thing, I'm going to select that diffuse shader and hit control T to open up the texture nodes and then replace that texture again. But this time I'm going to add an add shader and then a translucent shader and combine that to the add shader and then the color of the texture is going to go into the color of the translucent shader. And then I'm going to add a lamp, just a, a regular point lamp. And I'm going to drag it inside of the lantern. And the if you don't know what the translucent shader does, it allows light to pass through an object, even though that object might not be transparent, um, it'll still show light coming through, so the, the lanterns now will look as if they're glowing. Now we're pretty close to being ready to bake these textures, so any last minute changes you want to do to the lighting, uh, you should do now. And, and then we can start with the baking. So now I'm going to tab into edit mode 
and I'm going to unpin these UVs with Alt P. And I need to go to my object data and create a new UV map. And this one I'll just call Cycles Bake. Okay, so now I need to go down to UVs and just pack islands again. And that took all of those UVs that were layered over top of one another and placed them all individually. Uh, sort of scattered around the, the texture space. And now I'm just creating a new texture. And I'm making it fairly large. It's, you know, 4096 by 4096, which is, you know, a fairly big texture for a model this size. But because it has all that small stencil, I just want to make sure that it all comes through. And when your cycle is baking, you need to apply a texture node to all of the materials. And it needs to be the active node, so it must be highlighted in yellow. And you just want to apply that texture to the node, the, the texture that you're baking to. And in this case, it's called Cycles Bake. And then you just need to set your samples. I'm going to try a hundred, um, but it might take a little more than that because there is a glossy shader and sometimes it creates a lot of noise. Uh, and once that's done, you just click Bake. And so this is the final result again. Um, I hope you guys liked this video. I think I did manage to get it into one video. I don't think it's going to need to be a two-parter, although it's, it's pretty long. It's going to be at least an hour. Uh, so, so, you know, my apologies for that. But, um, but I hope you guys liked it, and, uh, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.